Paul and Silas. Now imagine if uh, Paul and Silas had been delivered at that very moment. They wouldn't have understood why God allowed the woman to annoy them so that they end up in prison. But these people, instead of complaining about God, God, I was working for you. I was working for you. Now, how do I end in prison? You, you understand? They start singing, 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 singing. You know what happened. I don't know what song they were singing, but um, it ended saving the jailer and his house. And it ended well. Now, let's see what, uh, how, how the story ended. So, they went out of the prison. So, you remember that God uh, sent angels and the doors were opened. But how it ended is, so they went out of prison and entered the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they encouraged them. You see? Now, but, but now, uh, uh, with, with the jailer, now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them and rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Can you imagine now? If Paul had been uh, taken out of prison before knowing how it will end, he would have never understood why, why God allowed this to happen. Even ourselves, there's something happened to, happened to us, but which saved some, some people. So now, when some women even put you into trouble sometimes, you have to imagine, why did God allow this? This is the very example that I'm giving you. So, going back to stewardship, I would like to let you know that um, I give my tithe because I imagine I thank God for keeping me alive and I thank God for delaying his coming because I'm working hard to be ready for when he's come he finds me blameless because if, if from now on it's okay now if I go to prison <laughs> I think I'll, I'll sing but before that <laughs> before this sermon if a woman had delayed, annoyed me, and I go to prison, I don't think that Jesus comes and find me singing. I'll be telling Chimama and Banda, say, Chimama and Banda, when I come out of prison, I want you to escort me somewhere. <laughs> There's some two words I want to tell to that lady who, who caused my trouble. But uh, we have to thank God that um, Peter, Apostle Peter, chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, 10 is talking about that um, a time will come when God will bring vengeance on this world. But before that, he's telling us that God is delaying our his coming so that um, we change our character so that when he comes, he finds us ready. I thank you very much. So the ladies, you don't be nice with ladies, like Jesus. But sometimes we get into trouble with ladies. <laughs> but um, <laughs> pray God that reach a time that to get in trouble with ladies and then see I thank you very much for listening to me. Amen. Amen. Break the barriers. Um, I was touched when he said that woman came to the well alone. At that time that she made sure that others were not there. Are you, break, are you breaking the barriers? Are you building bridges? Are you calling someone to come and see the Messiah? The verse that was read, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your Father in heaven knowing. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. I thought that number is 20,000, but he knows the number 2,150 has fallen off this morning when I was coming. That's how God knows you, and he knows me. And then the third one was, fear ye therefore, fear ye not therefore, you are of more value than sparrows. Let us take part to break the barriers and build the bridges. May God bless each one of us. Thank you so much, Elder, for the sermon and challenging us that we don't have to have any prejudices.
conclude our service this afternoon, we are going to rise and sing hymn number 375. Work for the night is coming. We need to work now before the night comes. We don't have to wait. Shall we all rise? We don't have to wait until we get to prison to sing. We can sing now so that we call someone to Christ. Oh, uh -huh. 